Good afternoon and welcome back to the program. Touchline is the show on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasik. It's about that time we talk about international football headlines on our segment Fan Zone, where we focus on the fixtures of the weekend and what has been trending in terms of global soccer. But before we do, I'm going to read some interesting message with regards to the uh, late uh, President Daniel Moy. In 1987, when Kenya was playing against Malawi, I don't know whether this is true, but I've seen it on Twitter. In 1987, when Kenya was playing against Malawi at Kasarani in the All Africa Games qualifiers, Malawi was almost winning the game because Rambe Stars were tired since they had played the previous day, and like Malawi, who had a week of rest. President Moy was at Kasarani watching the game and noticed Rambe Stars weren't playing well because of fatigue. He called his bodyguard and gave him orders to do something. In the next five minutes, there was a blackout at Kasarani, something very unusual. The game had to be suspended to be played the next day, of which Kenya won 3-2 against Malawi. Moi was a true football fan. I don't know whether that one is true. Of course, <laughs> I'm with my panelist. Anthony Mutinda is joining us for the first time. Anto Vipi. Good to have you on board. Do you think this message is true? Well, <laughs> we all need to survive, so... Yeah, yeah. So those tactics, tactics they are yeah. very much important. Very important, yeah. Also, yeah. oh, Robert, yeah. uh, uh, going by the clips we've watched on Moi, mm. I know we might not have been in position to to go to study then mm. yes. because of our age, but going by what we've been told, what we've read and what we've seen online yeah. with regards to Moi, you must have been a passionate love of sports. Hey, Moy was really a passionate lover of sports because you look at everything that they put ahead to, to know that Kenya was there on the map when it comes to sports. I think one of them was construction of stadium. He constructed the Kasarane Stadium for the uh, All Africa Games in '87. He constructed, he mandated the construction of Nyaya Stadium, which is a big one for them. And not only in football, but Cricket also. Remember we had the World Cup knockout trophy tour coming to Africa for the first time and it was played in Kenya. That was a big plus in the cricket world. Actually, one of, some of the sports people are really mourning President may have got to be the cricket fraternity because he gave them support to have that cup. And Kenya made it to the semis of Cricket World Cup, something that we have never, never done before. Remember the Moy Golden Cup? Yes. That used to be played on every October 10th. It was the final day and he could be there. Look at how full that stadium is in 1987 from that video. It shows you that this was a man who was serious about sport. One thing I learned was when we lost the hosting rights of the 1996 Africa Cup of Nations hosting rights, do you know that he was the one himself who wrote to Isaiah Hayatu apologizing that we are not going to manage to have this tournament here and it was second to South Africa. So that tells you that he really had a mind to help the sports industry in Kenya. True, true to that word. Yeah. I, I think uh, Mze Moy, uh being able to go into the stadium, watch matches, and I remember as Robert is saying, we used to have them, actually on holidays, we used mm -hmm. to have cups. All yeah. those the Moi Day Cup and all mm. that. So I think he's is a man who was passionate about these sports and this this also is uh, shown by the by, by the the effort he made in building the stadiums. So yes. I think he's a guy who, who did well and his predecessors should be uh, uh, should be able to replicate what he did. I think we were promised some stadiums some nine stadiums <laughs> but uh, it has not come to fruition if they follow to those uh, footsteps and i think we can be able to see more uh, uh maybe stadiums are being built anthony what do you remember the retired late president daniel moifo maybe in terms of what you've read about him mm -hmm. Okay, so in terms of sports, yes. personally, uh, Moi was a real pioneer when it came to sports. Because in Kenyan sports, you can see from the video, uh, the stadium was full. Yes. You know, I don't remember the last time we saw such a stadium being full. True. And even a president come in to see our football match. So he was a real pioneer and a real champion in, the, in terms of football of the country. And also, uh, maybe something, you know, I wasn't maybe born at that time yes. when he was a real uh, pioneer. But I've seen something that he has started. He started maybe the Kasarani Stadium. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe the current government should also take after 
that so that you can be able to get more stadiums and even we get more participation in the international tournaments. Do you think uh, we had some pre-election uh, pledges with regards to construction of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stadiums in various parts of the country? That mm -hmm. hasn't come to fruition. Mm -hmm. Do you think now the current uh, leadership led by President Uhuru Kenyatta for the sake of, you know, uh, decent legacy to mm -hmm. the late and yeah. respect mm -hmm. uh, for him, they mm -hmm. need to continue with construction of the same facilities because right now as you speak our facilities are in shambles yeah yeah horrible horrible <laughs> 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 well uh, horrible is a bad word because uh, you know he has tried something yes like we know the stadium in kakamega Buhungu. Buhungu. but that is scatters of the county yeah yeah okay so one thing i normally have never realized is the stadiums are they supposed to be devolutionized also I think it's the responsibility of national government. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah, but all But I think mm -hmm. counties also need to play a role because yeah. we've seen other counties doing the same. Yeah. Kenyatta sure. Stadium in Machakos County, mm -hmm. which was initiated by the uh, incumbent Dr. Mm -hmm. Alfred Mutua, though yeah. as we speak right now it's also in bad shape mm -hmm. and Narok Stadium mm -hmm. uh, in Narok County in Nor Kinoru Stadium in Meru County. Mm -hmm. I, I think also as much as we put the blame on government that we don't have stadia it's also down to the municipalities back then because I, re I remember during the Moi Day celebrations or the Jamori Day celebrations, we had government playgrounds. That's where people used to go to celebrate in those county playgrounds. What happened to them after? That's now when you are seeing the construction of Narok Stadium, the construction of the Kakameka and Bukungu and all that. But away from that, I just wanted to say that it is during President Moi's era that we had successful football years. I remember 81, 82, 83, we won the Sekafa Senior Challenge Cup three times in a row. Mm -hmm. We also won the club championship three times in a row. During Moe's time is when we won the All Africa Games. We won actually, Gormaya won the Confederations Cup. Kenya qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations three times in a row. After missing out in a span, I think, of 10 years, we qualified for 88, 90, 92. Three times in a row when he was in power. And that was a big, big plus for Kenya. Even the, the athletes who flourished, our, goal, our first gold medal came during our year, Moses, I think Moses Tanui. Yes. And that was a big plus during that. And no other person has matched that. I think uh, the problem we might be having now uh, is, I think the Moi era, there was, at that time, the kind of facilitation that used to be is not reciprocated at the moment. And uh, that's why I've put at that time. Okay. Which then kind of facilitation is this? Of, of course, uh, financial-wise and maybe fan base and all that, right now, we can see our teams going to games mm -hmm. and getting a lot of problems, mm -hmm. accommodation-wise, allowance-wise. At that time, I know there was that facilitation, yes. but a little bit small, but that was the economy at that time. Right now, we need to pump to inject more uh, facilitation into the sport. Wha Otherwise, what, what I've learned so far from everything that we have been seeing about the late president is for our fans to go back to the stadium the sports industry should start working hand in hand with the political industry because it is the politicians who will pull funds to the stadium and if th if they can learn that link that's when we because i remember during the more golden cup it was celebrations of the, gov the state government. And after, after lunch and everything, people could still wait for the final of the Moy Golden Cup and the president could be there and the crowds could be full. But today... Okay, though maybe I can add something. Yes. As much as I will say, you know, you want to say the politicians are the ones to influence when it comes to football. Mm. I think also it also goes down to the quality of football you have in Kenya. Yes. Mm. I think True. also like someone wants you know, to get value for his yeah, time you see, you yeah. see, to the stadium. Yeah, you know, like go to something like let's not go even in Europe. Let's go to South Africa. Yeah. You see, those guys have really improved their quality when it comes to football. And again, the privatization has really helped. 
yeah. as much as we blame the government, we also the government also has to let it to be privatized. Because as much as we would like, you know, government funding to the uh, to the football or rather even to the sport, it's really becoming a burden. Because nowadays sports is supposed to be entertainment as yeah. well. We've seen, you know, football matches like the countries just mentioned South Africa, you know mm -hmm. that uh, derby yeah. between Kaiser Chiefs and Alonto mm -hmm. Pirates. Mm -hmm. Mouth what's in crowd, you know, mm -hmm. fans showing up in yeah. large numbers yeah. to the rafters, you know, mm -hmm. the crowd is very full. Mm -hmm. Unlike in Kenya, the arrivals, Gore and Tefs yeah. Leopards, yeah. whenever yeah. they are locking yeah. horns yeah. against each other during Mashemeji derby, yeah. Yeah. Kasaran even is not half full. I don't I, know. I think, I think what we we've done, we, when we co compare the quality, okay, fine, the quality in South Africa is a little bit, not a little bit. It's, even it's not South Africa, high. let's go to... S Tanzania, wow. when yes. Simba is playing against Young. The problem with our, our game in Kenya is that we have not commercialized it. Yeah. Yes. We are not, we are not marketing our sport. Because if we were marketing our sport, if we were getting sponsors, who are sponsoring this kind of uh, maybe clubs, if we may say, because I think mostly clubs will be the ones which can make people come to into the stadium and they can pull more crowds uh, as compared to the national team because national team may, may be having a, a match after two months. But for clubs, it's a week in, a week out affair. So I think if we commercialize the sport and know that it's business, market it, then why not have uh, the, the crowds in, in the stadium? It's let's, let's, of course, I think <laughs> we're going to create a day <laughs> next week, then bring the icons, those people who manage to uh, have some close connection and association with the retired president, more sports-wise, so that they can give their in-depth uh, views, opinions, and thoughts with regard to Moi, the sportsman. But let's go to what we're supposed to discuss the fan zone I understand this is supposed to be the winter break how comes there are fixtures on card everton yes, yes. playing against crystal palace watford up against yes. brighton i don't know why are some teams not being given you know equal preference like the rest i think uh this is a, a case of this this is the first the, the first winter break that the epl how is significant is it uh two weeks i think Arsenal is in Dubai, and then we have we are having a, a match at the Etihad. I've seen Nicholas Pepe slaying. I think it's uh, w we might we might not have a correct answer to that because the winter break has really brought a bit of a scandal. I think you remember Jurgen Klopp saying he's not going to play senior team in the FA Cup, and they went with the under 23s under yeah. so that the players need that rest. So I think there are those clubs that were convinced by the FA that you can have your match at this particular time and they agreed to do that. But if you look at those, some of the major big clubs could not allow for their matches to go on in the winter break. Yes, and, and if, if we can copy something from the other leagues, actually you never have matches. If it's a winter break, it's, it's, it's supposed to be a winter break. It's not that, you know, we can maybe... If you're having an FA Cup fixture somewhere, other clubs also have, are having this oh kind matches of matches, at and still they're on winter break. So I, I really don't get why we we were introducing this break in the first uh, case. Anthony, which team do you support in the English Premier League? Oh, personally, I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> big fan of Pepe. Big fan of Pepe. A big fan of Pepe. Pepe. Yeah. Look, look yeah. for a different team. <laughs> 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 it's the best. It's the best. Eh? Yeah. We have the best. Like, we have a very upcoming coach. So yeah. maybe if I can say something about the winter break, yes. I think also it's something that you was seen last season. Uh -huh. uh, there were some games that were being played, but due to the you know the uh, the position of the stadiums, uh -huh. it, some teams could not play. Yeah. I could take a team oh, like okay. Newcastle. Yeah they were experiencing snow when the other teams are playing. Yeah. Okay? And also for the, I, I saw the in EPL, they really value the health or rather the players yes. too much yeah. compared to the others. Because, yeah. you know, some players do not really perform well during winter. Yeah. You know, like their performance is never at their best. Like take a guy like Nicolas Pepe. Even when he was in League One, yeah. during this December to January period, he wasn't at his best. But when now after the summer uh, comes in, yeah. it's easier. So also they're looking at the stadiums also probably, yeah. And the same summer transfer window set to be changed for September mm -hmm. when now players yeah. uh, will be acquired by different clubs. Good mm -hmm. move as well? Yeah, that's a good one. That's a really, really good one because I think it affected the EPL last season. How? Because you could see, like for example, the EPL cannot buy Man United lost Lukaku. 
see? No, and Sanchez. They, they can't yeah. buy. Yeah. See, they can't buy, and maybe it has come at a bad time. Okay, so it is good for me. I think it also creates competition. You know, like if the other leagues are closing at September first, I think they should be at step September first, all of them. But but you see, one, one thing people have never learned is the English people are funny people. Oh, they usually don't like doing things the way other people are doing things. I think you remember there are some teams that go for break in December. They have the chance to do that. They don't do it. Mm -hmm. They go on playing. I remember back. Uh, when uh, the competitions, like the UEFA competitions were starting and England was a prime candidate to be among the pioneers of the UEFA competitions, they took a step back and then they started to come back, they came back later. I think that's why they are doing some of those kinds, but something that we learn in due course on why they usually do that. I think uh, it also comes up uh, on the different kind of regions that the European leagues I played, we have Spain, we have England, we have Italy. You know, these people, these, these clubs play under different climatic conditions. So I think that's why you might see that some, maybe Spain, their, their break is at a different time. Mm -hmm. In England, in a, this one they are introducing at a different time. But all in all, we should have that uniformity. For example, uh, the, the transfer window. There's no way I, I'm going to lose my best player I'm gonna lose him in the summer, maybe on a free, but yeah. I get some uh, some quote in January or, or somewhere, uh, and I sell him, and I fail to acquire uh, uh, s another player uh, to cover uh, to cover that sell up. So I think putting it uh, at par with the rest of uh, Europe, I think is the best uh, is the best move for them, and I think we'll be able to see now uh, maybe transfers that we were not expecting to <laughs> to see. <laughs> so Anthony, I think uh, another headline uh, has been, you know, there has been much overwhelming talk, especially on Twitter, on how important, how paramount a technical director is to the team. Eric Abidal is mm -hmm. former Barcelona player, one of the best left backs yeah. uh, we've ever had was great uh, football. Now he's the technical director of Barcelona and there has been a fallout between himself and Lionel Messi. Yeah. But now people branding Messi as, you know, uh, someone who is uh, even beyond a coach. You know, a uh, club is bigger than an, ind an individual. Mm -hmm. But we've seen Messi leading to departures of several players from Barcelona. He had a fallout with Thierry Henry, Ronaldinho, Gaucho as well, Samuel Eto. Mm -hmm. Now he's having a fallout with the technical director of the club, Eric Abidal. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is it because of his influence? It's too domineering uh, well, that's to a be good dealt thing. with? That's a good thing. But I think Messi has really graced the world of football. Yes, we can't, we can't deny. In a different way. He's like has he's a very special talent, you know. Personally, at a semi to Tangunians who watch ball, I've never started, I've never seen such a player like Messi. As much as we say Ronaldo, but all the same, when it comes that to is, the that club, is a, uh, that is debatable. <laughs> 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 okay, but all the same, when it comes to the club, I always think the club is bigger. But if you can see where Barcelona is right now, imagine if they didn't have Messi. <laughs> as much as, the, much the, as you the say, thing is, imagine the, they'll be without the thing Messi. Is, and look at the, when the Messi was rising. Every time he was eliminating a player, every time he yes, was eliminating true, that's a, true. Player, a player, even a Zlatan player. Ibrahimovic, the same. Pep had to chase him away. Oh. No, it, 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 the the thing is, Messi. Uh, every coach who had a chance to coach Barcelona during Messi's time had to make his game around Messi. Yes. Messi was the key player mm -hmm. in that thing. What Eric Abidal, the Barcelona hierarchy and Messi himself have realized is your time is up. That's just that simple. All these other things <laughs> I don't know. I think this is, your time is just up. You have given us your good 15 <laughs> years, but upendo usipende, your, time's up, your time is up. The, this is where I'm going to say that uh, I'm going to say... Messi is 33 years. Yeah. Yes, he's Cristiano that, Ronaldo is 35. He's 35. So he's likely to... No, no, no. To, to look, at this, the look, at this, look at this. <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo... His attributes were he was a physical player. He trained hard. He trained his body to get onto that side. Messi, he was a, he was a, he was a feeling. He was not that kind of a player to come to play physical and everything. But he had that talent. And I think he made his debut in 2005. And that's when he made his debut. Mm -hmm. made his debut <laughs> in 2005. It is now 2020. Those are a good 15 years. And in those 15 years, he has won... 
Champions League titles. Except he has, he has won, won every everything. But, like, except World Cup. But with Argentina. Barcelona <laughs> and even the players playing around Barcelona at the moment, they know that it has come a time that Messi is going to leave this field of play. I think what I'm gonna say right now is there are, there are gonna be casualties. Yes. From all of this. Because yeah. um I think Abidal was wrong. How? This guy, you cannot go to the media and uh, start saying that, you know, these players who are not working hard under Valverde, they are the ones who made him get, they are the ones who made me suck Valverde. Mm -hmm. And this is what costed, did cost So Mark. Eric Abidal is the one who sucked Valverde? Yes, exactly. He's That's the, why he's the Messi is bringing director. problems. He's the he said that, you know, some of these players are not really working hard. It was sabotage. Yes. So the players and, and, and the coach. It, yes. But, so, but, how, but you cannot, this is an internal matter. You yes, cannot yes. go on commenting such kind of issues to the media. And this, this is, this is a, a, a classic example of what happened to Mourinho when he was at United. Yes. He was a casualty. So, so, because most of the time, yeah. Mourinho would go to, to, to the media and, and then make public pronouncements. Exactly. Criticize a player mm. on camera. Yes. You know, it's, it's really not good. And... If if there was sabotage, as uh, maybe Abidal is trying to insinuate, mm. he would. This is an internal matter. They would have tried to solve this matter but internally. Okay, I agree with that. I agree with that. That the players might not be working hard and everything. Now look at this. At the, that golden era of Barcelona, it had Eric Abidal himself. It had Puyol at the back. It had this key midfielder, Sergio Xavi Hernandez. Yes. Yes. Xavi yes. Hernandez and Iniesta. Yes. 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 Now, how many people have remained from that golden generation? Messi. Only of two. Sergio Busquets and Lionel, Lionel Messi. Messi. Mm -hmm. You look even at the game where they lost to Atletico Bilbao. You saw the picture of uh, Sergio Busquets sitting on the ground with his arms mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. And Messi with that picture, him looking at the ground. They themselves have understood that this one is good. Eric of course, of course that's, that's no problem. That's no problem. Mm. that's no problem. That's no problem. But you, you are not going to save your, pro, your, your, job your job through going to the media and make pronouncements and, 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 which and, will mm. really affect the club. Because, trust me, this season, uh, 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 Lionel Messi has played 17 matches. Uh -huh. We are saying fine, yes. his time is up. But yes. he has played 17, 17 matches. matches. Yes. He's scored 14 yes. goals. Yes. Fine, his time is coming. Yeah. But he's still performing. He's, he's still, still performing, performing. Yes. and and can we can we unanimously say that there is dwindling standards of football, especially at the top Spanish clubs, Barcelona and Real Madrid. The duo got eliminated from Copa de la Rey. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Does True. that mean that you know uh, the other teams are coming up because Athletic? Bilbao beating Barcelona, that was a stunner. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's true. Actually, the quality is actually dropping because of the two guys. But I also think uh, when it comes to Messi, Messi like he's a standout player. As much as you'll say his time is out, yeah, he's imagine, been exceptional. imagine now me, uh, Barcelona without Messi. Where would they have Look been? at this. Look at some, 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 people, some people argue on this particular front. Mm -hmm. Will Messi come at Watford in English <laughs> Premier League <laughs> and play the same way he does? At okay. the banner, okay. those, okay. those are not hypothetical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but I also think Messi really, you know, he kind of he he owes the 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 team. He really owes the team because if you can look at where he came from, the the Barcelona and UNICEF, they're the people who helped him. So he's more of a family to Barcelona than just a player. That one we cannot debate. That one we understand. But I'll still stick with my <laughs> point. <laughs> Barcelona yeah. is getting. They are getting, to, they already know and they are being told you are going to follow the likes of Manchester United. Your golden time is done. Mm -hmm. Go and make new players. Mm -hmm. They are following the footsteps of the Invisibles. Mm -hmm. These players were good. You played very well, but now go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. They are following the likes of Madrid. Look at what is happening with Madrid. Mm -hmm. Go back to the. And now the big question is you have been playing for 15, 20 years. With Messi as your key player, so is the next key player. <laughs> Dembele. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who is the next key player? No, actually, uh, there's a, I saw somewhere someone <laughs> saying right now, <laughs> Barcelona is a bunch of clowns. <laughs> True, <laughs> a bunch of clowns <laughs> and a team with no class. Yeah. Because since Xavi and uh, Iniesta left, actually mm. their recruitment has been, I I, I don't know what. 
right now uh, Abidal is going to change mm -hmm. the recruitment has been pathetic yeah. they have been at some point they signed Kevin them. Prince Boateng <laughs> 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 they, 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 they signed Coutinho yeah. where is he right now yeah. look at them Arturo Vidal where is yeah. he he left yeah. the club yes of course ah no he is he's, he's still, still, he's still the there but mm -hmm. but performance wise as that comment is saying mm -hmm. it's a a team of uh, Clowns and without and clowns. Look, so look at even the players <laughs> they, they left. Do you, can you believe that Adama Traore was a Barcelona product? They want him back. At the academy. Wolves, yeah. say, Wolves are saying that, you know what? You uh, give us 90 million. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, 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 yeah. Anthony, yeah. Uh, Liverpool, despite the fact that they fielded a weak squad against Shrubbery mm -hmm. in the FA Cup replay, they managed to win mm -hmm. uh, uh, by one nil. I think Jurgen Klopp deliberately wants to be eliminated from this minor competition so that he can concentrate mm -hmm. on English Premier League and probably UEFA Champions ah, League football. But is he, is, he on course, is he on course for, <laughs> for treble this season? Because he looks like he's going to win English Premier League title. Yeah. Because right now, mm -hmm. as you speak, they're on top of the table with yeah. 22, 22, points. 22, points 22 points adrift. Points, yeah. Champions League, they're also uh, on course. Mm -hmm. They're looking they're, forward they're to retain the same way Real Madrid, Madrid has done before. Mm -hmm. FA Cup, they have... You know, qualify yeah. to the next stage. I think yeah. they will be playing against Chelsea. 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 Yeah. I don't know. Can, I they, can Jurgen Klopp win a treble? He can. A uh, treble? No. 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 Given, the team, given the team is fielding in FA, and given that no, no, he's no. not even in no. charge of the FA Actu match. Actually, this is only one game. Yeah. Remember, this is only one game yeah. no. that was played when the winter break was happening. And so yeah. he said, you, you know, my first team is not going to be involved. Let mm -hmm. me relax mm -hmm. the muscles. But right now, I'm, I'm telling you, he's not going to field that kind of team when he's fitting. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Every player knows when you have record breaking points, you can do anything with the team. The training is already gone. If they have a chance to keep the Premier League, why not also try for the FA Cup? Because you have got the good players. Even if you are not playing your key players, you have still got good Liverpool players who can go head to head yes. against Chelsea yes. and actually perform. So you have got a chance to have a double at home and still you have another knockout competition which is the champions league which takes two three weeks break and you, have, you can field your team there and go ahead and win okay for me one thing i know about klopp klopp is a very tactical guy yes klopp will never field his strong team against chelsea in fa yeah. and the next week he knows he's facing another team in champions league so yeah. probably he will play like, like uh, the likes of lalana you know, the Divo quality, Corrigi. yeah, the oh. Divo Corrigi is and all. Come on, yeah. But, 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 yes, but, 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 against but Chelsea, he's a, Chelsea have a, a fiddle team. player. He no, plays no. second fiddle Chelsea, role Chelsea have at a Liverpool. Team. He's Chelsea still a good a player. Team. And, and, and given that they're in Stamford, they definitely have a superior team. Let me ask you, what, which Chelsea are you talking about? Having a superior team than the second team, team of Liverpool? Of Liverpool. Yeah. Team. Which team? A team that could not win against a 10-man Arsenal for, like, a whole game? Uh, 75, 75 minutes. minutes. Yeah. You know, let me tell you, Jagan, uh, uh, the, the, the game against Chelsea is going to fine. He's not going to fill his, all of his first 11, but he's going to juggle around that team and still get a winning team against Chelsea. Because right now, the mentality of the Chelsea team is very, very down. And with the, with the cojones that Liverpool are, ha are having right now, yeah. trust me, uh, I think they are, they, they are more than capable of winning the... Actually, they, they have won the Premier League. Yeah. And you remember when Liverpool... I think <laughs> Arsenal... Liverpool played against Arsenal in the same competition, the one that ended 5-4. Yeah. I think it went to post-match penalties. Yeah, and it went uh, to Jürgen Klopp had fielded a week squad. A very, a very, sort very of young inferior. squad. And you know? then at that time, remember where Arsenal was. And also, uh, at that time... Anai Emery mm -hmm. had also fielded some of the academy players. Yes. So they were but at least talking, at par at that time. At Anfield, and here they'll be in Stamford Bridge. So he's going to okay. field so a stronger team. <laughs> he will only gamble to go through the round of 16. Yes, if use, use, use that mic. Are, are you saying, you know, we are heading into the <laughs> quarterfinals of the FA Cup, <laughs> if, you're not, if, if you don't know. Mm -hmm. So uh, one, if he beats Chelsea, mm -hmm. then he's into the quarterfinals. Actually, not quarterfinals into the semi-finals yeah. of the FA Cup. Mm -hmm. So why not field a strong, uh, a strong squad? That's what I'm saying. He's gambling. 
If he goes through Chelsea, uh, he's going to field the next strong team next. Because, <laughs> come on, EPL is done and dusted. Yes. The Champions League... Even Unless something happens. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is, is not going to happen. <laughs> 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 because Man City, who are supposed yeah. to be their mm. opponents, are really sleeping up. Yeah, 22 uh, points. Uh, and I think also they might go to Etihad and also take the... the league so they need, I think they need six. Six wins. Six wins. Yeah. And that game, I think the seventh one or sixth one, they will be playing against City. Yes. Oh my goodness. The sixth one will be against Everton, mm -hmm. then City. <laughs> Those teams will still will not defeat Liverpool. Yeah. But, but in case, in case yeah. Jurgen Klopp fields a weak squad mm -hmm. against Chelsea mm -hmm. and he wins, he, he will take bragging rights, of course. <laughs> bragging right. rights and also guaranteed that's a treble. You see, when the under-23s want to get onto the Jurgen Klopp team. So they are putting mm. all their best. Yeah. 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 In case he wins English Premier League title, UEFA Champions League, is it honourable for him now to quit Liverpool and why Burnley? quit when you have already look for another challenge yeah, yeah, for because he would team. have all, uh, achieved, you know, that milestone. No, 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 no. Ferguson did that. Still, stayed. The mm. only thing these coaches have is how do you transition these teams? Because it will come a time. The mm. way we are talking of Barcelona, you don't have Sadio Mane, you don't have Firmino, you mm. don't have Salah, you don't have Fabinho. So. What kind of players and caliber are you going to bring to still have the same, same DNA that you have at this moment to go on beating teams? Are you giving us a golden team for a generation? Or you are just becoming a Pep Goodwill? Strike us for three years and then <laughs> forget about you. The one thing, one thing I always know about uh, Klopp, Klopp is very good in recruitment. He takes just an average player, makes them outstanding. Yeah, he did, he did that that's, with that's Borussia Dortmund and they still failed. We no, he did well. Because, because, <laughs> but you know, because it we, have, we have to agree. Yeah. We didn't know about Robertson. We G didn't know about Trent Alexander-Arnold. Yeah. Gijo Wilnadam is one of the outstanding players in, right now in the midfield of Liverpool. Yes. Jordan Henderson, James yeah. Milner. Talk about Mane. Also, Mane, you didn't even know him at yeah. Southampton. Yeah. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think is right now as we speak, I think is undeniably the uh, you know best manager. I think uh, I arguably, think not arguably. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I am not going to put that arguably there. Arguably. I think right now is is the best in Europe currently, unless something has. In the, in the world. In the Are world. we talking about club <laughs> football or uh, overall, even at the national team level? Okay, we have no, you know, uh, club football is really very, is very different the from... The dynamics. Yeah, exactly, the dynamics are very, very different. Unless he gets to manage a national side, then we can be able to, to see what he brings on board because national sides are always but, very, But very you say club Look football is the, is the best one to rate him exactly, because yeah. he's working week in, week, week out. out yes, and he's playing a lot of matches. Yeah. So I think for now he's, he's the best uh, coach in the world. And as, as, as you were trying to insinuate that he should maybe... Was it a question? <laughs> that he should leave Liverpool up yeah. if he wins the treble? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think so. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a, a good time that now he'll put in more effort to try look, look and like maybe win uh, that Champions League Friend, uh, let, 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 let me help you with this <laughs> argument. Eh? You see, like in tennis, we play best of five mm -hmm. to, yes. to know that you are the outright mm -hmm. winner or best of three. So you have won the Champions League. You have won the yeah. Premier League. Mm -hmm. Now that is just the first round. Mm -hmm. yes. Now we have got another exactly. round to go. <laughs> Prove it to us. Prove it to us. Then give us another round again. So that we understand that if, you are, yeah. If he does what he's done this yeah. season for mm. three consecutive seasons, yeah. uh, then I think now it will be mm. high time that he may try to see how uh, a transition of, of the Liverpool team yeah. happens and then he can... Because he failed outside. with Borussia. Exactly. Yeah. So, though, though, okay, maybe if I can cut you short, something I can say about three consecutive seasons, it's so hard to three, cons three consecutive seasons. Ferguson Look at Pep. Did he yeah. didn't. Ferguson. That's CPL. <laughs> Yeah, in EPL, he did yeah. it. Three consecutive seasons? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. he did. Yes. One but one thing I'll say... I think Jose Mourinho did it twice at Chelsea. Yeah. But one thing I'll say with Klopp, Klopp did well last season. You know, they slipped at the last moment. They did well, they broke points for the season, some, some points for the club. Also, this season they're going to do well. So let's give him up to next season. I think that will be three. Good. <laughs> three to good to go. Yeah. I think we have to wind up. Time is yeah. up. <laughs> the show ends at three. Yeah, you are parting short final thoughts. So, Robert, what are you looking forward to after here? Now that Buju Banton's concert is cancelled. <laughs> 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 because right. of uh, yeah. the late, you know, yeah. the concert was supposed to take place at KICC. Yeah. And you understand the burial of the retired yeah, Daniel Moyes happening. It's 
live on channel one by the way for those who are looking forward to, uh, catching up with what is happening you can get glued on the screens of kb some other station to get to know what's happening so buju banton's concert is cancelled so mm. what happens next uh, i think uh, we uh, were treated very well prestigiously <laughs> by you before you were in town last weekend i think it was the concert for the cool kids yeah <laughs> for the cool kids you remember the president former premier yes, yeah. were there at mm. the carnival mm -hmm. i don't know what's well, may, may i be going to watch just the la liga matches uh, because i I'm really hoping Real Madrid can bounce back because they really lost to Real Sociedad and see if they can take this leg from Barcelona. And that will be now the nail on the head. Messi, you are off. <laughs> <It's done. laughs> I think I can, uh, I can sneak into RFV for a few minutes and then maybe at six. Queens, uh, Queens against homeboys. Exactly. Mm. And then at six, I have a concert at the uh, Kenya National Theatre. Mm. Uh, Kisi ni Mkisi. Oh, there is that. Okay. Concert, yes, oh. this, uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> this evening, <laughs> and then maybe in the so what's happening late there? hours today? At KNT. Yeah, they have uh, young the, artists are coming to showcase their exactly, prowess, exactly, their prowess and their talent, uh, uh, from the Gusi, larger Gusi region. So, I think it's some something you can maybe have a, uh, a sneak in and check, uh, check out what they have in store for, for, for you, uh, and then maybe in the late hours, I can. Join Osoro in watching the La Liga matches, you know. Their timing is very, very okay with the time that I will be leaving the uh, Kenya National Theatre. Anthony, for you, what's, what's the plan ahead? Well, the plan ahead is not, not to do anything for me, but I'll just enjoy EPL as yeah. normal. I know I love EPL. But uh, maybe if I can say maybe something small about the parting shot, I would like to say maybe if we can try to do something like uh, privatization, privatization of the football match in Kenya, I think we'll go so far. How? Like, uh, let's take maybe the government to release officially from the government fundings to the privatization. Like, for example, you can see in England, you know, Fly Emirates are investing, Etihad yeah. Airways are investing. So, personally, that's one of the investments I'd like to do in the future. I'd really like to, like the private sector, uh, to get into football. And hopefully you'll have that patience. <laughs> whenever, whenever your entity is performing, <laughs> yeah, yeah, personally, <laughs> badly, personally, we'll yeah. have to, you know, wait for a little yeah. longer okay, I'm for results to come through. Oh, so <laughs> you are used to. I'm, yeah, I'm planning to run for the FKF <laughs> presidency. <laughs> <laughs> help you out there. Anyway, hey, that has been touchline every Saturday, one to three on Y two five. We're keeping it cool and easy, you know, trying to keep you posted with what is happening in the local and international sporting headlines. We never discriminate. You can as well come on the show next Saturday in the fan zone and defend your team the same way Anton has done. Is very proud of Arsenal despite their horrible show in English hey, Premier League. Hey, hey, not horrible. <laughs> <laughs> not horrible. <laughs> not horrible. Not a forest in the championship. That's the team I support. Equally doing pretty well, hoping to see them in English Premier League. Of course, they are two-time Champions League winner. They have at least one a title that Arsenal has that, never That's managed. the defense he has. And so is Aston Villa. Arsenal fans, <laughs> Man United one. <laughs> Nottingham Forest. Well, I don't know what <laughs> Maureen <laughs> Marui, our cameraman, uh, <laughs> camera person supports. Hopefully it's Arsenal as well. More she looks, yeah, like, yeah. She looks like an Arsenal fan. You know I'm told, beautiful women support Arsenal. And handsome men too. So. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Thanks to our crew for you know uh, facilitating this. The likes of Zakaria Abdirahman, the young man coming up, my good friend here, Fadila Atmani at the gallery, of course. Let's do this again, same time, same place, next Saturday. One, two, three, touchline. The public viewing of uh, the late President Daniel Moy happening right now at KCC. You can uh, get the opportunity to go and watch uh, yourself as well, or probably get glued on TV, KBC Channel 1. Parliament building, sorry. Thank you for your time. Always a pleasure. Have a good afternoon, and God bless you.